Oh, wow. It's been a long time. I said my red wine pizza. I miss that. Oh, I was getting my body used to that. Hello, folks. Welcome again. I am the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom. I'm here to talk about pro wrestling. First of all, before I get to that, like I always do, I need to thank everyone that's interacted with me. And even there's even a new subscriber. Someone, some watches the show. That's amazing. Hot Wheel Boys, you sir, <sighs> win twice because you got that six count. Octagon Cito, you said thank you for approving my message there over in the Discord. You sort of master the air guitar.
Moose! You're jiving to that briefcase boombox. And Rocco! You can just crawl out of here. Oh, let's see. It has been a while since I have red wine so, and pizza, so I have to let my body get used to this garbage I'm putting in my system now. Uh, so I need a little hydrating beverage there. But now let's get to SmackDown. Overall, the matches were, well, what you'd expect. I'll tell you what, I was fairly entertained, especially by the non-wrestling segments. They, they were kind of good. It starts off, a little thing on the screen. Oh, wait, before I start about SmackDown, some not-so-good news. Uh, as probably a lot of people have heard in the wrestling community, Howard Finkel passed away. I mean, he he was a very dominant personality in the WWE as the ring announcer. Uh, again, every WrestleMania, I think he's announced people from Billy, the superstar Billy Graham. Wow, that's going back a long time. To Triple H. I mean, that's that's like molt. That's it has to be at least. I know they gave the official timeline, but it, that had to be at least. 25, 30 some odd years doing that. I mean, he's had his spot. Ooh, excuse me. Shasta Cole is just extra bubbly. So, and my condolences do go out to the Finkels. Um, he had a full life. I mean, passed away at age, I think, 70. Yeah, age yeah, fifty. Yeah, seventy. That's kind of a normal lifespan, and it was of natural causes. It had nothing to do with this nonsense. So, seventy years old is kind of like the, the natural way to go. So again, my heartfelt condolences go out to uh, Howard Finkel and his family. Here's my own little tribute. To Howard Finkel. And also, uh, WWE started off SmackDown. Nice little banner there. Very tasteful. Bravo, WWE. In memory of Howard Finkel. Uh, I think this was 1950 to, 19, to 2020. Yes, it would be 70 years. Again, that's kind of a natural lifespan. When you think about all the, all the wrestlers that have passed away too young. And then when you see old wrestlers pass away, you're like, hey, it happens. Do you want to live forever? As for the movie Highlander from by Queen. I want it all. I want it all. I want it now. And also, that song was featured on Sucker Punch. One day I do have to see if I can find that movie. Because... The soundtrack's really good. And I just want to see the movie. Again, anytime you have like undead Nazi zombies and samurais like wielding bazookas, that's just screams. A hobo, hobo theater. 
So again, uh, SmackDown started off in memory of Howard Finkel in 1950 to 2020. That was nice. Uh, starts off with a moment of bliss. And wow, Nikki Cross just looks so much like a little girl. When she jumps up in that chair, like a little girl sitting in grandpa's, in grandpa's like overstuffed chair. She looks so tiny. And the other thing in this, they all wear their belt. I like the fact that, they're, that they've stopped putting it over the shoulder. They wear, wear it like they should. And their moment of bliss was with Braun Strowman. That was pretty cool. Now Braun Strowman shocks, yeah, we have history. And then he finds, oh, you got me a gift. And this box, I'm like, no, it's a trap. It's like, no, you're, wait a second. If you find an, a weird box, you're not supposed to take it and open it up. You're supposed to report to the police. See, if Braun Strowman won, like, if you ever go to a WWE event, if you see anything strange, report it to, to security. He found a gift box. But that's not natural. Nikki Cross, well, she gets too excited about stuff, so, so who knows. But Alexa Bliss should have been the responsible one and reported that box to security. Because in that was a black sheet mask. That man! And then it went to like the old school Bray Wyatt uh, entrance. And it showed a picture of... <laughs> and it was a picture. Because there were like fans in the background. So it showed uh, Braun Strowman wearing the sheet mask. And then they cut the commercial. So it's kind of a weird way to go, but that was okay. Then the first match, we have Sasha Banks taking on Samina. And Bailey actually uh, went to commentary. She accompanied Sasha Banks to the ring. Sasha Banks had a nice, like, small t-shirt. And Tamina's not necessarily a smart girl. But Tamina, I'll tell you what. If they didn't dress her up like a Klingon, I have a feeling she'd look pretty darn cute. That outfit does not do Tamina any justice. He said Tamina comes off looking like a Klingon. Um, Sasha Banks put the shirt on Tamina, and you could tell it was a small. Tamina says, I'm an XL. And that's fine. Uh, Tamina wears it well. Again, let's see her. Yeah, because she's an XL. She's a large. XL is a common shirt size anyway. I mean, especially if you're a very busty woman. Yeah, you need that XL. Even a small wooden wouldn't fit. I don't think. I think even I got. I, I even got my sister. I think a, a medium or large T-shirt. Indeed. What size did I get her? I think I got her on a, a medium. I think either it was a. I think it was either a woman's large or a men's medium. Yeah, now that I think about that. But yeah, so uh, smalls. I, I, I've bought men's small shirts. They're really tiny. I think my nephews are just like too small. My one nephew is too small for his age. But that's a whole other issue. Um, so, so to me, I took, took it up. Threw the t-shirt at Bailey. Bailey cut the t-shirt. It's good. At least she threw it at someone. And Sasha Banks went right to the roll-up. But found out Tamina was too strong for that. Uh, during the break, Sasha Banks uh, beats up Tamina a little bit. Puts her in the chin lock forever. Bailey distracts Tamina. Tamina goes into the post. Then Lacey Evans comes out. She takes out, ba she takes out Bailey. Um, and then it's a super kick. Oh, and a second super kick. And that was it. Tamina beat defeated Sasha Banks. I think she, they tried to do a little bit more. But, yeah, whatever. It was an okay match. You kind of knew this was going to happen because this way it sets up for Money in the Bank, which is going to be May 10th or 11th, whatever that uh, day is. Um, right now I have a whole bunch of paperwork covering up my calendar, and that calendar with May is too small. So May 10th or 11th is going to be Money in the Bank. I'll be live streaming my R&R &R &R show. And I can't show that as long as I don't do anything stupid. Between now and then. Um, 
So Bailey is going to take on uh, Tamina is going. To, I'm sorry. I always mention the champion second. Tamina is going to take on Bailey for her belt, and it's going to happen in Stanford, Connecticut. And I do like the way they're setting up Money in the Bank ladder match, so that they have to fight through the whole corporate building, starting on the first floor, and the belts are going to be on a ladder, literally at the top of the building. Right above the presidential suite. I like that. That's different. I can appreciate that. Uh, Jay Uso then cuts cuts a promo. So yeah, that match. Uh, it was a ham sandwich. Jay Uso cuts a promo. Yeah, it's the Uso Penitentiary. Then we have Sheamus taking on Denzel. Dijarnay, I apologize if I butchered your last name, Denzel. Sorry about that. Denzel comes out. Collegiate wrestling. I like collegiate wrestling. Um, he actually did pretty good against Sheamus when he was doing that. Got a good double leg takedown. Sheamus got up, went for a second double leg takedown. Nope. Sheamus just starts just smacking him around. He pummeled. He got pummeled that second time. Then it was a bro kick, and it was a squash match. I do like the fact that at least the jobber is getting in something. He surprised Sheamus with his collegiate style of wrestling. It's a ham sandwich. And then Sheamus starts yelling at Mike at Michael Cole. Because then we have a Jeff Hardy versus your career segment. So that was interesting to see. Again, the ups and downs of just such a party. Very intriguing indeed. And then we get to uh well back to the segment between Dan and Carmella. Wait a second. I want to know who has had more work done. Dana Brooke or Carmella. Because both of those look unnaturally enhanced. And then the next match we had Naomi. And by the way, I want whatever headgear Naomi is wearing when I have to go to Walmart. That would just be so cool and badass to show up to Walmart in this like glowing LED light head thing. I mean, the way they're saying people should wear masks, I mean, people look like Freaking Mexican bank robbers with a bandana around their face. If ever anyone walked into one of my stores in the past, the bandana on their face, I would just call the police. I'd be like, 911? Dude, there's a guy with a bandana in, on his face in my store. I think we're being robbed. So whatever Naomi has, that's what I want. And she was taking on Dana Brooke. Dana Brooke can still do flippy stuff. Uh, they start off. Pretty quick, uh, rolls up for both. Naomi, she did that. She, she, she did uh, the one kick, then a side kick, then a springboard kick. Dana hit like a Batista bomb. Dana learned something from Dave Batista on their date. Good for her. Then there was that. Oh, you, know, you could hear the one. Hear the one spot. And oh, oh no, it was a bad spot because. Dana Brooke tried to do like a moonsault leg, and she, and she was right over the knees. But he, Naomi didn't even have to bring her knees up to protect her. She just like had to lift her legs off the ground. It's like, oh, she hit her knees. And then we have a rear view by Naomi into the corner. Uh, however, she missed that split leg and moonsault, which looks so impressive. And then, whoa, Dana Brooke learns how to do the roll up. Because Dana Brooke wins by a roll up, Dana Brooke is going to the ladder, to the Money in the Bank ladder match. Impressive. This was actually a pretty fun match. This was a cheeseburger match. Let's see here. Oh, then they had the explanation. So Sonya Deville's in the ring. Say it, Sonya. Say it. Say it. 
I'll say it. Boo, Sonya Deville. Boo. 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 No, Sonya Deville. Boo. Sonya Deville spoiled it. I was thinking like every other guy was thinking. I want to hear it. Say it. I want to hear that dumbest phrase of them all. I wanted Sonya Deville to say, No, that didn't happen. That was terrible. <laughs> I just wanted her to say it. So, boo, Sonya Deville. Boo. Again, she just came out to be a, a pretentious bitch. Oh, yeah, she said bitch, too. So I can say bitch, then. We're all good. Um, and then they got into a lot of the sex talk. Like, like, Mandy gagging. Like, why are you gagging, Mandy? What are you gagging on? Oh, oh, he just did not say that. Oh, and, and, and Sonya Deville is acting like the jilted lesbian lover of Mandy Rose. And I just wanted to see, see a live sex show to the makeup sex between Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose. Whoa, 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 whoa. I have to, I have to tranquilo. Because there might be kids watching this. I don't know why. But yeah, I just want her to say it. Say it. The high HLA. The high lesbian action. And then Dolph came out because Mandy like, literally tried to kill Sonya Deville. And then Otis came out. Otis came out to defend Mandy. Kill Otis. Kill. 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 Oh, I want to see Otis. I, I want to see Otis like just absolutely destroy Dolph Ziggler. And I'll tell you what, besides the Randy Orton stuff, this might have been one of the best non wrestling promos the whole year so far. Randy Orton's definitely number one. I'll tell you what, this might be like 1A because that was good stuff. I just wanted her to say it. Just like they tried to make Liv Morgan say it, but it didn't come out so natural. Because boo, Sonya Deville. It's coming out in all tears, and I'm like, say it, say it. I want you to say those words. But it didn't happen. But then Mandy Rose smacked her. And wow, Mandy Rose was not wearing a bra either. How could I tell? I could tell. Then they had a really nice Howard Finkel tribute. It kind of showcases years. Again, announcing everyone from uh, the uh, superstar Billy Graham, Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, Ultimate Warrior, oh, a whole bunch of them, Bret Hart, Heartbreak Kid, Shawn Michaels, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, Triple H. I, again, I think they they might have mentioned. I I I didn't watch all of it. They showed some of his funnier segments when he came out, when he got stuck wearing a, a doink wig, when he had a toupee on, um, when he was just doing goofy stuff that that he was probably asked to do. Again, it was it was his time though, and more importantly, it was of natural means, not 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 stuff going on. So. He probably, he, to hear, I'd like to be a fly in that wall between stories between him and me and Gene Okerlund. Ooh, those would be some good stories. Uh, then we had a Forgotten the Sons Pro, which I already forgot about. Then we had Cesaro taking on Daniel O'Brien. Uh, this is a pretty physical match, very technical match, too. Um, Daniel O'Brien starts off with a wrist lock stomp, hammer lock by Daniel O'Brien. That's really good. Um, too much. I'll tell you what they're doing. I do like the fact that they have announcers there and they're trash talking. So at least it sets some volume into the ring. However, you could hear one of the spots. Was it this match or the next match? Oh, yeah, it was this match. Uh, Cesaro, he's just so strong. I mean, even just when selling the one arm injury, that's, he's still so great. Uh, he went to the sharpshooter. 
And they mentioned Bret Hart, too. Indeed. They're trying to cozy up to Bret. Because Jericho's been cozying up to Bret. WWE's cozying, cozying up to Bret. So I think... The next Dark Side of the Ring is the one with Dino Bravo. But I know eventually the one with Owen Hart comes on. I think, don't quote me on this. I think that's going to be the finale of Dark Side of the Ring. So maybe they do want to be nice to the hearts. Who knows? Let's see here. So the, yeah, Cesaro put on the sharpshooter, the figure nine. Again, those European uppercuts of Cesaro is the best. Uh, Daniel Bryan then went back to work on the arm with the Juju Katami. That's pretty cool. Cross arm breaker. Uh, then he started those kicks and that kick to the neck. Oh, that looked like a like, legit hit, like the back of his head. Uh, then the Daniel Bryan with the 12, six, 12 to 6 elbows. Ooh, ooh. So that's pretty interesting. I think the other one. Well, then they started to trade. Uh, transitions and submissions. Uh, the cross face by Cesaro to the label lock to Daniel Bryan. Eventually, uh, Daniel Bryan does lock in the label lock and surprisingly picks up the win over Cesaro for a spot in the in the ladder match. That's interesting. So again, this was probably the best match of the night. Again, the other two matches, the other couple of matches, they, they weren't bad. It just seemed like something I could have done. It was okay. This was much better though. Again, when once you get start start to get more technical, I appreciate it more. This was a good surf and turf match. Then in the main event of the oh wait before this, <clears throat> there's a little biggie uh, promo. There's a Miz promo here somewhere, and then Elias. Comes out, he wants to sing sing a song, and then whoop, he gets wailed by wailed on by Baron Corbin. Corbin's smart. If Corn really wanted to play up, um, Elias says guitar playing. He had his guitar hand. He started to he started to work over the guitar fingers. So excited with this. So so it'd be my my left hand because that's that's how I do. I'm backwards. So I, so I kind of strum here with my left and, and, and do the uh, whatever board thing you call it. Am I right? So if he really wanted to go over, he should have gone all Blue Demon Jr., just taking a hammer to his fingers. But instead, he got whacked by the guitar. Guitar makes such a great sound. And let's see here. And then what led us to the main event? There's Big E taking on The Miz, taking on the other Uso. I always forget who it is. Uh, Big E starts with a belly to belly to, to a miss and it starts to take the table apart. Uh, Big E, however, does not know the rule of tables. The rule of tables states you set up the table, you go through the table. And Big E's like talking throughout the, the match. It's so fun to hear. Um, so, yeah, eventually Miz and the Uso suplex Big E through the table. And then the Uso decides, you know what? It's not that's just enough. I'm going to throw Miz out of the ring, dive on him, and you know what? I might as well dive on Big E too. Uh, the Miz does a slingshot double axe handle off the top rope. I like that. It's a combination of new school flippy stuff with old school double axe handle shot. I like that. Then he said good night as he hit the skull crushing finale. Into the figure four onto Jay Uso. And then from there, however, Big E picked up the miss straight from the figure four to the big big ending. That's an impressive feat of strength. And he got the one, two, three for the win. So the new Day Rocks. New Day Rocks are the new tag team champions of the world. And then we had um, Skype sessions from both Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston at home. 
this is a good cheeseburger match. And overall, it was a good cheeseburger with SmackDown. I mean, with all the news of layoffs and furloughs and stuff, WWE still knows how to put on a good product. And I'll tell you what, even on the, on the sports radio station, you know the only sport they're really talking about? It's pro wrestling. Whoa. Imagine that. So that's it. My week is over. I guess that's the only thing about not having live events is that I have my weekends off now. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And keep your keep yourselves properly hydrated. Shasta Cola. Old school cola. And everyone take care and have a good weekend. Bye.